Are you finding it really hard to get on with your hair care journey? Like you started all gung ho thinking, okay, this is the year. This is the time that I'm going to finally be serious about my hair and take care of my hair, and grow long. And you're just finding yourself extremely frustrated. It's not working. If that's you right now, please stay tuned. I'm going to help you and give you some of my tips and hacks and advice that I wish I had gotten for myself when I first started off um, in my hair care journey. Hi, my name is Sandy Esprit. I'm a content creator here. And today I'm going to share with you easy steps that you could take that's going to make your hair care journey that much better. Full disclaimer, this is my opinion. This is based on my journey, what I did and what um, I stopped doing that's helped me uh, achieve the hair goals that I wanted for myself. And so before we get started, I'm gonna ask you to click that subscribe button and make sure you comment down below any questions that you may have. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, here are 10 things I would have done differently um, had I known better. For starters, I would have taken a trip to the doctor, uh, specifically a dermatologist for that matter, and this is the reason why. Growing up, I had flakes, I had dandruff, and that was like lifelong, okay? So for years, I was told that it was because I wasn't moisturizing enough, I wasn't using enough oils, or I wasn't using enough hair grease, or that I wasn't drinking enough water, or my diet and lifestyle and all that other stuff. When in fact, it was because I actually have dandruff. Now, dandruff is not something that you can cure, but it is something that you can treat. Now, this whole itchy um, scalp, flaky scalp, and sensitive scalp, it can happen for various reasons. I mean, for some people, it is, uh, due to product excess product buildup and I'm sure me piling on all these products on my hair did not help for others it could very well be a hormonal or lifestyle lifestyle or a diet change um, for others it, like there's a host of reasons as to why you could have flaky itchy sensitive scalp for me personally it's because I have dandruff so I would have gone to a doctor, seeing a dermatologist to get that diagnosis so that I could better understand what next steps I need to take so that I could have a successful hair care journey. Number two, I would have definitely, definitely invested in seeing a licensed hair stylist, someone who doesn't charge an arm and a leg because my hair is super curly, coily or, or kinky or type four if you're into the curl typing. Um, Someone who actually knows what they're talking about, someone who's actually spent time educating themselves on curls and hair texture and, and the different ways to treat hair and to take care of hair. I would have spent time with them to really get a better sense of understanding of what it is I need to do, <clears throat> what it is I need to do in between hair trims. And I get it, like hair stylists are really expensive. Don't get me wrong, especially here in Canada, like you really need to invest take some time, budget, save to go see a hairstylist. And it's hard to do so when you're on a broke student or a broke college student lifestyle, um, like, right? Um, it's easy just to throw on some braids and be like, I'm out, I'm done. But for me, I think I really needed to take that extra step simply because I, my hair wasn't behaving, my scalp nor my hair wasn't behaving like everybody else's. Number three, I would have definitely started being careful with the kinds of products that I was using on my head. And that that like goes even beyond just taking care of my hair as a natural. This also is when I was relaxed. Do not all uh, shampoos and conditioners behave the same. And so it's very important to know what kind of shampoos you're using, what do they do, and not be afraid to change it up if the shampoo isn't working or if the shampoo and conditioner isn't giving what it's supposed to give. Uh, I don't believe that your hair should feel extremely dry after using a shampoo and conditioner. Like your wash day shouldn't leave your hair like stripped of everything, whether you are relaxed or natural. So I think that's really important. I, I wish I would have taken the time to understand what my hair could feel like and what my hair should feel like versus what I kept getting because it just wasn't working. Number four, I wish, I wish I wasn't so afraid of 
heat. I mind you, I have a good reason for it, but I wish I hadn't been so afraid of heat. Like I literally thought that if I had just given up heat altogether, my hair would flourish. And truth of the matter is that's not what happened at all. Um, like I didn't suffer from heat damage, but there were other stuff that I was doing to my hair that was not good. So definitely the whole idea of avoid heat at all possible. I think it needs to be revised into, um, use heat minimally and as needed. <laughs> like I didn't need to flat iron my hair every day, but I also didn't need to like avoid all types of heat either. Like that, that's just wild. So having a better understanding and a better educational. Oh yeah. So number five, I wish um, one thing that I wish I hadn't done or had stopped doing is just, I wish I had stopped looking at other people's hair, wanting it for myself. And what I mean by that is that like looking at other, at, at, at somebody's hair and being like, until my hair has this particular curl pattern, this particular hair texture, this particular volume, this particular length, I won't be happy. That's what I'm talking about. And I wish I hadn't spent so much time looking at people's hair going like, oh my gosh, this is what I want. Because honestly, especially when it comes to length, length can be bought and um, <clears throat> like literally like you can buy the length, you can buy the volume, but like that satisfaction, that confidence, that self um, love for your hair that you have and being just being satisfied with who you are and how it is, that's priceless. Like that's one thing I wish I could have been able to tell myself is just how beautiful and how perfect my hair is the way it is and how how okay it is. Like it is so okay to change your hair pattern. It doesn't make you self-hating. It doesn't make you um, a sellout and it doesn't make you anti-black just because you put a relaxer on your head. Like it really doesn't. At the end of the day, it's all about loving yourself. Number six, I really, really wish I had not, I, I had just been consistent with the shampoo and conditioning. Like it's so crucial and so important to one shampoo to clean the scalp, especially in my in my condition with with the dandruff, with dandruff, having dandruff, like if you want to get rid of the flakes, you gotta wash your hair. You you cannot keep adding products to your hair to the scalp and expecting it to turn out okay because it's it's not. Um, I have had my hair break. I've lost the like the back of my hair has broken off um, from excessive oil usage. I have ruined some. I have ruined some satin sheets. Some bonnets have been completely destroyed, forever stained, um, just for from overuse and exceedingly like just over exaggerating my usage of these hair products. And that is like money that was spent. <laughs> time that was spent. I can't get that back. And my hair was not better because of it. I wish I wasn't so focused on length. So for so many times, like for so long, I was so focused on length. I was doing all of these things um, in order to retain length. And I mean, I got the length, but my hair didn't look good. Like when you have like three scraggly ends, you know, and you're just like, oh, I'm I'm collarbone or I'm I'm armpit length, but you know, it's all thick and voluminous up here, and it's like scraggly and thin and brittle down here. It's 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 not a good look. Like I honestly, looking back, I'm like I really was focused on the wrong thing here. I was so focused on length that, yeah, I achieved it, but it, the, the results were, was not giving. And, you know, I was looking at all the, again, you're looking at the hair goals and I'm like, I have the length, but that doesn't look like this person's picture that I have saved. I wish I didn't wait so long to get started on my natural hair journey. I really, I, I really wish I hadn't waited so long. And I waited so long because I was so busy listening to other people, uh, especially those like the, the older, the ones, the elders, my elders, those that were older than me. I, I spent way too much time listening to them, taking their hair advice, taking, um, visiting their hairstylists, <laughs> which was not, not working out for me. Uh, you know, I, I waited so long because I cared so much about what they said and I thought that their version of what made me beautiful was going to make me feel beautiful and when it did not feel beautiful I was just very much discouraged and I had this idea of man if I can't reach their standard how can I ever reach the standard 
And the truth of the matter is the standard is me. I cannot become someone's version of someone's version of what's beautiful. My hair will not become um, somebody else's hair's texture. Like it's just, it's just me. And I wish I could have noticed that they had an issue with my hair. Um, and their issue shouldn't be my issue. This is my hair. God gave that to me. And so, which delayed the start of my natural hair journey. And I honestly wish I had started earlier. And also, I wish I had been honest about what my hair truly is like. When I first started, uh, I had this idea of what I thought my hair was like. And it was denial. <laughs> and I mean, like, you know, looking at my hair and being like, oh, I don't have good hair. I have, my hair has problems. My hair is, is uh, too frizzy or it's too wild or it's, it's too, like, and again, coming that, that all stems from what other people were saying about my hair. Uh, I really wish I had an honest conversation about my hair and the state of my hair. That, listen, yeah, it is a bit damaged, but it's nothing that can't be fixed it's nothing you can't love it's it's nothing that won't grow it's 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 your hair and it's beautiful and it comes out of your scalp in a, in its own beautiful anti gravity way and and it defies all odds and it can do things and it's versatile and it's it's you can get it to a healthy link like i i just these talks just talks like these of like it's good enough and it is beautiful and it's curly and look at that coil and look at the way it reacts in the water and look at how it look what it does when you put a gel to it look what it does when you uh, apply this particular leave-in or okay it doesn't like that one let's not do that again these conversations and having that internal dialogue uh, when it pertains to my hair and so I hope this helps. I hope this encouraged you. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section below. I will gladly answer those questions for you. I really want you to win and I really want you to fall in love with your hair because you're, you're deserving. You're deserving of achieving your goals. You're deserving of having that satisfaction, that confidence in yourself. You can do it. You can do it. Okay? The, like You can do it. And I believe in you. So... Don't forget to subscribe, click that like button, come back. There's going to be another video and I hope this is helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now.